school fifth grade dare graduation class would like to welcome all parents, family, and friends who have joined us virtually in celebrating our special day. We have spent the last several months learning about the drug abuse resistance education program and how to say make safe and responsible decisions. We will continue to use what we have learned through our lives, especially when we are faced with tough situations, even though certain circumstances have prevented you all from joining us on this special day. We are all excited to share our success with the program. Hope, we hope you enjoy the program.
During the past few, mo past few months, we have been learning many things during the D.A.R.E. program. Each student wrote a D.A.R.E. essay about what they learned and how they will use the information in the future. The students then presented their essay in front of his or her class. We are proud of the hard work that each and every student put into writing their essay. The following essays were chosen to be read at our graduation today. Have you ever been a DARE student? Because I have. DARE stands for Drug Abuse Resistance and Education. It is also taught at school by a police officer. It teaches, it teaches you the importance of drug resistance. The information is important because you can learn about things you should avoid. In DARE, I learned about the DARE decision making model, tobacco and alcohol, and about things that can help you stay drug free. My first DARE topic is the DARE decision making model, or the DDM. The DDMM is the fold in the DARE book that you use to identify the problem of a situation and everything about it. There are four steps of doing so. Define, assess, respond, and evaluate. Define is where you describe the problem. Assess is where you look at your choices. Then respond means to make a choice using the information that you have gathered about the situation. And evaluate makes you review your choice. This is my first DARE topic. My second DARE topic is what I learned about tobacco and alcohol. In there, I learned that cigarettes contain nicotine, a strongly addictive substance that makes smokers do what they do. I also learned that there are about 75,000 alcohol-related deaths, deaths in the U.S., as it says in the book. In there, I learned about smoking and alcohol and how badly it could affect you. This is my second year topic. My third and final topic is what I learned and how it could help me avoid drugs. I have learned about the negative effects of drugs, smoking, and drinking alcohol, which makes me not want to do them because all they will do is cause harm to me. I also learned about the number of deaths which are related to either smoking, drinking, or doing drugs. This would make me want to do one of the three even less. This also means that other future DARE students can see the information about the harmful effects and refuse to take any of the three. This is my second year topic. I believe that learning about tobacco, stock alcohol, the BDMA, and things that can help us stay drug free were great experiences. I also believe that drugs, alcohol, and tobacco are horrible things and you shouldn't take them. I believe that DARE is a great program because it teaches kids the importance of not taking drugs. My name is Jessica. 
Go ahead. Have you attended dairy yet? That is exactly what I have done, and it has been a wonderful experience. You get a lot of knowledge and learn to abstain from using drugs and consume alcoholic beverages. Dairy is a s system that stands for drug abuse, resistance, and education. Officer Bunch is teaching us a lot of things that we will need to learn in the future. In the next few paragraphs, I will be talking about my experience, what I learned, and how I can use it in the future. Dairy has been a fantastic journey for me. Officer Brunch, my dear officer, is an amazing person who teaches us a lot. For me, dare is a great way to learn at a young age how to avoid drugs and alcohol. I personally think that dare is good for me because I've experienced drug people making wrong decisions, but sadly, dare is coming to an end. I've learned a lot from dare. I've learned how to not do drugs and not to drink alcohol. When I first started there, I thought I did not need to do it, but I quickly changed my mind. I've learned many ways not to mess up my life by doing drugs or drinking alcohol. The second time we had day, we started learning, uh, learning about making responsible choices and not doing something over it. There are a lot of ways that I can use infor this information in the future. I can use in this information in the future in a lot of ways, but one way I can use it is to not do drugs. Another way I can use this information in the future is by spreading this information to people who might not have done there. Even if you do not do drugs, you will most likely get a better job, and if you do not do drugs, you will most likely live a longer, healthier life. Even though I have learned a lot from D.A.R.E., it will have to come to an end. I will keep what I have learned in D.A.R.E. As, in mind as a grow. I hope people keep enjoying D.A.R.E. Ready. Today our guest speaker is Mr. Dale Henderson. Mr. Henderson served the Bartow County Sheriff Office for an amazing 36 years until he recently retired. While with the Sheriff's Office, Mr. Henderson worked in the Jail Division, Patrol Division, Investigation Division, Courthouse Security, and retired from the Juvenile Court Division. Mr. Henderson has been married to Mrs. Gina Henderson for 37 years, and they have a son, Travis. They also have two grandchildren, Micah and Maddox. Mr. Henderson is an ordained Southern Baptist minister in the camp. He has had many important days in his life, but the most important is January 12, 1997, when him and his family gave their lives to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mr. Henderson is what we call the real life leader and has been a true mentor for Officer Bunch. Please help us give a warm welcome to Mr. Bill Henderson. I'd like to give you a story about uh, a young man who went through there. Uh, he was many years ago. He was my son, Brad. Travis went through the DARE program in Cloverleaf Elementary School. His uh, deputy that did the um, DARE program at that time was uh, Richie Harrell. And Deputy Harrell did an awesome job with the students there. One of the things that I tried to always do with my son was build trust. I wanted him to be able to trust me and trust what I said. And at the same time that I would have trust in him. And that's something very important for your students to do with your parents trust with your, with your parents. So that they know that when you come to them, that you're coming to them because you need help. My son was uh, a freshman in high school and he had made the varsity baseball team. There was only two freshmen on that varsity baseball team that year. That team went on to win the state championship for Carter High School the first year that they done it. During the year, the team would get together and they would have, they'd have special nights together. Something to kind of bond the team together and help them become one. Now there was uh, no sophomores on the team, junior seniors, and just the two freshmen, the two youngest kids there. One of the seniors had a, uh, their home, they had a home on the lake, and they were going to have a party up there. And I was assured that there was going to be no alcohol involved. It was just a time of fun, a time to grow together and fish and just go out there and really enjoy one another. So I allowed my son to go. But on the way, one of the boys stopped at a store, went in and bought some alcohol. Now at that time, there was a lot of pressure on the two freshmen, my son and one another. A lot of pressure on them from the older kids to do what the older kids do. And you're going to face those same situations one day. I'd always tell my son, if you're ever in a situation, you don't 
feel comfortable, you call me, I'll come get you. And I'll not ask any questions. And my son gave me a call. He said, Dad, I need you to come pick me up. I'm at the BP station on Main Street. I said, okay. So as I started out the door, I told uh, his mom, I said, you want to pick Travis up? She said, why? I said, I don't know. He just asked me to come pick him up. I went and picked him up, and the other freshman was with him. They got in the truck, and one of the seniors was there, stayed with us, made sure that they got the truck for me, and we came home. I didn't ask Travis why. I just knew he needed me to come and pick him up. About a week later, one of the parents of the other freshmen was sitting there, and he said, I want to thank you for Travis making the decision he made. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, he called you to come pick him up. Him and Matt up. I said, yeah, that's true. He said, um, well, you don't know why? I said, no, I never asked Travis why. He said, the boys had stopped to pick up some beer. And Travis told them, he said, I can't do that. And when they tried to talk him into it, and they tried to talk the other student into it also, but uh, Travis said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. That took a lot of courage. A lot of courage to stand up to those older kids and tell them no. Look, this was a decision that was made long ago, long before that ever came He already knew what his answer would be. He already knew how he would handle that situation. He had a choice to make that night. And uh, I thank God that he made the right choice. Now the other kids, what happened to them, I don't know. I don't know what they done in that. But what was important to me was the choice of my son. And one of the things that helped him make that, make that choice was he knew he could trust me. Now, I don't know where you're at in your relationships, um, but be willing to, to, to sit down and talk to you. Be willing to sit down and talk to that adult in your, in your home. Be willing to sit down and talk to a teacher, to an administrator here in this school. If something's going on and you're not comfortable and you feel like you're being forced or you're being pressured into something, always have the strength inside of you to be able to go and talk to someone about it. Let me tell you, my, it takes a lot of integrity to do things sometimes. My definition of integrity is you'll do the right thing, okay? But not when everyone else is looking. You'll do the right thing when no one is looking. And that's the good part of that. Because you've already made the choice. You've already made the decision. I want you guys to know that uh, you guys have a special place in the heart of my church. Friendship Baptist Church. And my church prays for you on a weekly basis we have prayer just for the students of peace and elementary school. For the teachers and for the administrators. We come to this school before school ever opened up this year. We were out front of the school walking and praying in the school. So know that there are people out there that you don't know that you've never met before that care about you, that love you, and you want to see the best in Thank you for having me here today. God bless each and every one of you, and I will continue to pray. Now, each student has written a personal statement confirming their commitment to making safe and responsible choices. Each student will say their pledge during the conferring of the certificate. not to do drugs.
I pledge to never do drugs. I pledge to never do drugs. I pledge to never do drugs. I am Sandra Cordero Gonzalez and I pledge to never uh, drink underage and smoke tobacco and to never do drugs in my life. I am Martha Chavez and pledge to never do drugs and to never bully another kid. I'm Javier and I pledge to use what I want to do to help me in life. My name is Peyton and I promise to never do drugs. My name is Kalal Charles and I pledge to never do drugs. I pledge not to do drugs. I pledge not to do drugs such as nicotine and alcohol. I, Brianna Betcourt, pledge to never do drugs or smoke. I'm on a pyramid. I pledge to never do drugs and anything alcohol related. I think it's interesting to break the way I My name is Kolo Charles and I pledge to never do drugs, alcohol, or bully others. I pledge to never do drugs or alcohol. I promise never to do drugs. I pledge to not to do drugs. I pledge to not do drugs. My name is Liz Reyes and I pledge to never do drugs, drink alcohol, or both of them. My name is Case and I pledge to never do drugs or drink alcohol and any tobacco related products. I am Ellen Hernandez, pledge to never do drugs as well. I just didn't let up, 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 I just didn't let up. Me, Lucas Grace, pledge to never do drugs. I'm Lauren, I'm Lauren O'Tien, I'm pledge to never do drugs. My name is Marcus Daniels and I play to never do drugs. My name is Arnold and Douglas, I play to never do drugs. 
My name is Omerio Garbia Lopez and promises not promise promises to never do drugs or alcohol or drugs or tobacco. We pledge to always make the right choices and to not do drugs. to never drink alcohol until the legal age of 21. I think you will just pledge to never drink alcohol. I pledge to never do drugs. I pledge to never do drugs. Thank you to uh, Chair Hill. 
Michael Sapp for coming. Thank you to your uh, dear officer, um, Mr. Burke, Bunch, and then um, thank you to our guest speaker, Mr. Henderson, as well. So give them another round of applause. Thank you all for coming and um 